Hey folks, my name is Ravish and welcome back to another video in the series of DevOps real-time scenarios or DevOps real-time questions. Okay, so uh, as you can see on my screen, today's problem statement is related to Terraform. So the problem statement is something like uh, an interviewer can ask you or there could be a manager who can ask you that there is only one developer or a DevOps in the team who is writing code in Terraform. Okay, so he is writing Terraform, he or she is writing Terraform scripts. Now the state file that is created, it's created in the local. Now another developer or another DevOps is hired who wants to use it. What should we do? Now let us understand the problem by drawing a diagram. Okay, so consider, uh, let me select a proper black one. So consider this as DevOps one. Okay. Now what he is doing, he is writing code in his local system. So this is local system or a local PC or a computer, anything. Okay. So when he is writing code, the Terraform files, the .tf files would be in his local only and the .state file would be in his local only. Now there is another developer who is hired by the manager or the team. So he has joined the team. Previously, there is only one person who is using it. But now there are n number of persons. So there can be two people or three people and more people. Now we'll come to this later. What exactly th is a state file? So state file basically has all the information, all the metadata that is created on the, uh, let's say AWS, let's, let's say example of AWS and all the infrastructure created on this AWS. Okay. So this has all the data. Now what happens is, if you're going to create four EC2 instances or four clusters, all this information will be stored over here in this state file. Okay, so that's why state file is important. If you want to dive more into the state file, you can go through uh, Google or you go through the uh, registry of Terraform, you will be able to understand. All right, we'll uh, concentrate on the problem. Now what happens is this state file has all the information of this infrastructure on AWS what will happen how will these people will use something that is not in their laptop or machines so this is laptop machine 2 this is machine 3 and this is machine 1 so they won't be able to use this state file so if they are not going to use the state file how they can contribute to this infrastructure so i hope you have understood the problem now let's talk about the solution so if the solution will take the green one Okay, so this would be the solution. Now what happens is, when we talk about the solution, we already know that whenever we want to collaborate with other teammates, what exactly we have to do? We have to make this state file available over some place where everyone can access it. Okay, so what we'll do is, we'll the uh, solution, like this is how you're going to answer, that we'll propose to push this to, if you are using AWS, then you'll use AWS bucket. Okay, so AWS bucket means S3 bucket. Okay, so that's the answer to your question. That where do you keep it? We'll keep it in the S3 bucket. So what happens is when it is in the S3 bucket, everyone would be able to access it. Okay, so this is the first answer that you're going to give. Now the next question comes, what should we do and everyone wants to use it okay so let's add one more question to this to this problem statement how what should be done and how it should be done okay let's circle back to the solution so now we have decided that we are going to move it to s3 bucket now what exactly happens what is the process Okay, so the first step that you're going to take in creation in, uh, let's say, let's give this migrating state file to an S3 bucket. Okay, this is, this is something that you need. So the first thing is you need to create a file. Let's say you have main.tf. Okay. So you are already having a main.tf. In that main.tf, you have to write something like this, Terraform backend. Now this backend is going to be a 
S3 bucket. Now this S3 bucket will be needing a few things and we are going to discuss that right away. Okay. Now whenever you create this kind of infrastructure, so there are ways of creating it. We'll talk about this, but let's talk about the S3 bucket. So the first step in the main.tf is writing the backend S3, this, this part of code, and you can get into the registry part. The second problem, the second solution, I mean, is creation. Let's say you want to create, create an S3 bucket. So you'll go there and create an S3 bucket. Now you will create your own policies, whether you want to make it public or not, that's totally upon you, but it's ideally not, it should not be that way. So creating an S3 bucket would be the next step. Now what you can do is you can, while creation of it, you can give it a name. So let's say I'll give uh, my company name. So my company hyphen Terraform hyphen state. I think that should be fine. Okay. So if your company is Microsoft, then you can like write Microsoft hyphen TF state or any other company for that matter. So this is the next step that you're going to do. Okay. After that, whenever you create it, you have to give it a region, right? Now you will say that all the S3 buckets are global in nature. I agree they are global in nature, but you have to mention which area you are give, uh, creating it. So if I consider US East one, we're going to use this US East one in the further project in the further example. Okay. Now this is done. The third step, the third step is you have to name your file, which file state file. Okay. How it is going to be named? I'll explain you later. The fourth option is you have to create a dynamo DB table. You have to create a dynamo DB table. Okay. And this dynamo DB table, what happens over here is in this dynamo DB table, it's going to store, uh, uh, let's, let's talk about this first in this S3 bucket, it is going to store your state file, which is this, this name. And in dynamo table, it's going to push all the entries, which has your digest value, digest value. Okay. Without this, you cannot migrate your state file to S3 bucket. Okay. So these are the things that you need to create. Now let's move to Terraform back to Terraform. So when main.tf, which we're talking about, we have to give these options. So I'll copy from here backend. So I'll just create backend S3 and the topic which we wanted to discuss is first of all, you'll write whether you want to encrypt it or not. Okay. So if you want to encrypt it, you'll give encrypt equal to true. After that, they'll ask you the bucket name. So what exactly is your bucket name? You remember you give it over, gave it over here my company TF state. So you'll write over here is my company hyphen TF hyphen state. Okay. Uh, let me delete this for now. Cool. After that, you have to give the region. Okay. So what was the region? Region was US East hyphen one. Okay. After that, you have to give the key. Now, what is this key? What exactly is this? So this key is the name of the file, the state file. Okay. So if you want to keep it in some kind of folder or something, it's not exactly a folder. We will talk about it right now. So name it something like this Terraform. I'm going to write TFM state slash your file name. So I'll write just, uh, let's say anything any name dot tf state. This is how you define it. And then after key, you are going to write dynamo table. Okay. So you have already created a dynamo DB and in that you have already created a table. Uh, table will be automatically created. Don't, don't worry about that. Or 
if it is not getting created by your IAC, you have how you have to go and manually create it. So you have to write something like Terraform lock. Terraform lock is a very good name to choose because uh, if it's going to get locked, you'll be able to see the digest value over here in the dynamic table. Now points should be noted. What exactly is the digest value? And I leave it on you folks. Just Google it and understand what exactly is a dyno, uh, digest value in a dynamo table of a Terraform lock. Okay. Now this is, and then you have to give a role ARN. Now this is one of the most important thing that you need to know. So a uh, role name is basically roles there. You create roles and policies, right? Okay. And it is also one very famous question in any AWS interview or any DevOps interview. What exactly is the difference between roles and policies? So first, you have to create a policy. In this policy, you have to give access to the S3 bucket. And then you have to attach that policy to a role. Okay, so these two are important things. Now, if you want, you can add it over here. Let me give it six and give a five over here. Create a policy and a role in AWS IAM. Okay. Because when you create it, the S3 bucket and uh, when you create this file, you have to attach this roles and policies. Okay. And this role ARN will be something like ARN hyphen AWS hyphen, sorry, colon IAM colon. And here comes your account name. This is generally a number. This number will come over here. If you use multiple accounts after that, there would be colon. It should come over here, but I'm just writing it over here. Role hyphen. And what was the file name? Your file. Uh, you can write anything like Terraform state S3. Now this is the name that you will use over here. Okay. So make sure that you go. So once you create this role ARN, you give it a name, right? It will ask you for a name. This is the name that you have given Terraform state S3. So you can use it Terraform hyphen state hyphen S3. Okay. So this is something you can use. You can use the same name for policy as well so that you don't get confused and you can give it a different name. This is something you need to do. Okay. Once done, do it like this. And once this is completed, go back to your console, write Terraform in like if you're doing from scratch, then you can write Terraform in it, I, but you don't have to do it because if you are, you would be already running it. Then Terraform plan and then Terraform apply. Apply. Once you do it and if everything goes all right, your S3 bucket. Now this is how it will look like AWS S3 bucket, something like this. Inside that bucket, there would be a path created. And this path will look like something like this. Terraform state, any Terraform state, any name dot TF state. So something like that. So Terraform state hyphen any name dot TF state. And this is this problem to your solution. Now I would suggest you should do practical for this. And let me, uh, let me see if I can Google about it. So if you Google it, you'll find something like this. So this is how it's done. Terraform backend S3 bucket, the bucket name, key, part to my key, region, US East one, something like that. And you can read more about it over here. What has the S3 bucket permission? This is seen in the following I am statement, something like this. What exactly you want to create? DynamoDB table permissions, if you want to give something like that, you can go more on that. But uh, the problem statement was to do what? So this is how you explain in an interview, like what exactly you're going to do. So they can go inside and ask you a lot of questions based on this. What exactly is the process? And this is the problem statement. Again, I would reiterate the problem statement is one person is working on his local and the state file is in local. Another developer or another DevOps wants to use it, but how it will use it and what should we do? And this is the problem statement that I wanted to explain. And this is how you do it. So there are a few steps for it. 
and if you are confused over here here i would write them again so that you can use them okay so again steps i'll just write them again first is create an s3 bucket and this is how exactly you're going to answer the question after that bucket policy okay this you have to do and uh, all roles so roles and policy that you have to create after that you have to create dynamo db and inside that you have to create a table preferably by the name of terraform log after that you have to go inside main.tf or you can write your own separate file which is known as backend.tf backend.tf and point to this backend s3 bucket which is backend okay because this is already created and how you are do going to do it i've already shown you the code and after that you just have to do terraform in it or you can say initialization and the last point is apply terraform changes okay so these are the th six things we have to do so uh, i hope you folks have understood it and uh, you have got what exactly is the problem statement how do we understand it how do you want to use it and the ideal scenario is never ever keep this state file in your local because if something happens to your local this is a caution something happens to your local a hard drive get caches uh, get, um, crashes i'll write it as a caution never keep your state file in local and why the reason i have already explained that your hard drive can crash you cannot share it second reason you cannot share it first reason your hard drive can crash third reason it, it if it gets accidentally deleted you will lose all the data and importing the data it's like again another task so it's an overhead so fourth reason is it's a bad practice it's it's not a good practice okay so i hope you folks have understood it and uh, before ending this video i would like to request that please subscribe the channel because it really motivates me to create more content like this so thanks guys and i'll see you in the next one